Dando everyone. Dando. It's, it's the Kundalini Yogini. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today because I actually have with me here my brother, Nira Jananda. <laughs> Many of you guys <laughs> might know him already. Um, I know we have a lot of the same uh, subscribers. Um, quite often they overlap. So he's visiting me from Seattle right now and came up um, now that I'm in Vancouver. So um, we decided we wanted to make videos together and we're going to dive into a topic which I have been very excited and kind of waiting to dive in, delve into with you guys, which is the topic of water fluoridation, of intaking fluoride, um, and kind of the flip side of what you've probably grown up hearing, that it's good for you, that it's uh, good for your teeth, that it's, you know, healthy to have in your tap water. Um, if, you're, if you grew up in the U.S., which I know most of you guys who follow me have, um, we, were, we were taught this growing up. Basically, I'm going to link for you guys below to do your own research. Um, there's a, just so many, too many studies that have been done that you can see for yourself um, on Fluoride Alert. I'll link that down below. And also, there's an amazing short film um, by someone named Jeremy Cypher, I believe his last name is, called Our Daily Dose, mm. um, which that was what really opened my eyes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting. This topic... Um comes up because I also came up uh, from Washington into Canada and the uh, glory of today was I got to wake up and take a shower and know that I was not poisoning myself when doing so and such a beautiful thing to have uh, no poison freedom. going into my body yes enjoying that in Canada um, thank you oh Canada um. but our um, you're welcome guys <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the local Canadian coming in for his... Uh, Cameo. <laughs> you know. But it's interesting because we've not always agreed on this topic, my sister and I. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was uh, just beginning my spiritual seeking, um, maybe when I was 15 or so, I brought this to the attention of my family uh, and my sister that Floyd is poison and it's doing all these things to us and... I was met with absolute rejection, absolute <laughs> non-belief, and absolute denial. So That is true. <laughs> yes, um, it was for me to hear something like that, um, being such a very trusting and optimistic person, um, it was very hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that that would be happening to us on such a large scale, that such a large scale mass medication of the population would be mm. happening um, in a negative way. I thought, why would there be any reason or motivation why the government would want to hurt us? And we're actually not going to go <laughs> dive into that side of things in this video, um, but more so address the, the logical arguments, the, mm -hmm. the fact-based arguments of why fluoride is a major issue, especially from the legal standpoint, actually, of, of the human rights violations, which it is violating in so many fronts, um, that the United States specifically is violating with its fluoridation of its citizens um, and non-citizens alike in medicating its tap water on a mass scale. Uh, the United States is responsible for over 70% of all of its water supplies fluoridating them and we have the highest levels of water fluoridation in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing at this point in time um, because if you actually look back at the history, I think that was kind of what helped me understand mm. when I was learning about it, that the same time fluoride was added to drinking water for the first time was in the 50s, okay? The 50s, the time of the nuclear family, of war propaganda, and of medicating the population with lead, mercury, and fluoride in the tap water. So now we hear this <laughs> and we think, <laughs> and we think, what? Lead and mercury, those are poison. Yes, they are. And at the same time, back then, they were considered to be okay and safe in mm. drinking water. Mm. So somehow we've eliminated lead and mercury, thank God, but <laughs> fluoride hasn't worked its way out. Um, and a big reason for that <laughs> is the narrative around fluoride. That mm. The narrative around yeah. fluoride that we are shown is a narrative mm. mostly coming, as far as we're concerned in our daily life, from our dentist. It's probably, who, probably the only source of information on fluoride you've ever come across. Is your dentist when he asks you, "Do you want uh, what flavor fluoride do you want in your trays?" Mm. And then you bite down on that weird stuff. <laughs> Understand, right? It is if 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 sodium fluoride is in the water for our teeth health. If you had a cut on your arm, 
Would you put Neosporin on the cut, or would you drink the tube of Neosporin? <laughs> Same way, if your teeth need fluoride on their external structure in order to structuralize themselves as a fluoride mm. and strengthen your teeth health, then contact with your teeth is necessary. Contact with your inner intestines, heart, blood, and brain are not needed, especially when the substance doing so is toxic to the rest of your body. So fluoride is actually even by the CDC itself, the oral health division of the government of the United States, they even acknowledge that intaking fluoride, ingesting fluoride, doesn't do what it's intended to do. It, it needs to come in direct contact with teeth if it's for oral health, period. So why are we ingesting it? And to look back at the history again of fluoride, it is extremely toxic and acidic. And not only that, it's, it's to, to help you understand the scale of poison which is happening mm. to your internal system, know that fluoride was literally used itself in, as, in pesticides and rodenticides to kill bugs and insects um, and rodents in mm -hmm. the house. And this is something which we're intaking literally how many times a day. The more hydrated you are, the more you're intaking that tap water, you're having more and more and more fluoride in your body. And this, what was mind-blowing to me is, was finding out in our daily dose, which is uh, mm. rightfully titled, um, it, it beautifully explains how in one glass of water, what percentage of that, like that's already multiple times the amount of fluoride you're supposed to intake at a healthy level. If, we are, if we're, if we're going to go with the argument that there is a healthy level of fluoride, okay, we'll run with that for this video, then you drinking tap water continuously, say eight glasses a day, right, mm -hmm. is far surpassing the health level for your body. And not only this, we're talking pregnant women and small children who are intaking this also. So if, if there is even a healthy level for, for adults, which is, I think, I believe it's like 0.06 parts per million or whatever um, in one glass of water for a person above 16 or something like this. What about all of the beings, oh, the, the embryo, the children, the babies that are also getting fluoride, not only in their water, in their milk formulas, in their foods. Mm -hmm. um, this is extremely damaging to the growth of children. Well, because what about them, right? What about them is they are getting bone disease. They are getting their IQs destroyed because their brains aren't functioning right, because their brains are being fed poison. Where does fluoride come from is a great question. What is sodium fluoride? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's man-made, and it is not a natural occurring substance. Calcium fluoride is, but calcium fluoride and sodium fluoride are not the same. Sodium fluoride comes from the phosphate scrubbing industry and is a nuclear waste byproduct that the government struggled to get rid of. What is occurring is that sodium fluoride is, has been linked in over 50 studies to reduced IQ in children. On top of that, it also has been linked to bone cancer and other diseases in adolescent males and it is affecting minority groups and pregnant women in huge ways. So I think it kind of takes us back to the fundamental question of if we're going to give something which is considered a drug, it is considered a drug by the FDA, not a nutrient, fluoride, it's considered a drug. So what we're doing, what the government is doing is adding this into the drinking water of the entire country. So without consent of its citizens, without people getting to choose whether or not they want to get fluoride in their water, or if they don't, if they want to be in taking a drug or not, if it's safe for them at that level or not, if their kids are getting it or not, if their embryo is getting it or not, we're being mass medicated, and most would say actually mass poisoned, at a governmental level, at an infrastructural level, this is completely unacceptable and extremely illegal. If we're just looking at the judicial implications of this, it's huge. The fact that this is still happening is actually insane because we're in 2018 and this started in the 1950s. How this is not being questioned is because it's become such a, uh, what do you call, what's the word? Uh, Taboo? taboo subject, exactly. It's become such a scientific taboo that scientists are 
not even allowed to question this anymore. And that's exactly against the fundamental principles of science. Science is supposed to be questioning everything, right? We're never supposed to come to a conclusion with science. That's why it's supposed to be uh, the logical side of how we, ra we rationalize with the world. But when, we're, when scientists themselves are not allowed to come out and say what they actually know about fluoride and are not allowed to question this when it, just because it's been happening for decades, mm. there's something really wrong going on here. And we're not giving consent. The biggest thing is people, a lot of people don't even know about this. I didn't even know about this. So if we're not even having the information to understand what we're taking, we're being drugged without our consent. And this, as Nira just said, it disproportionately affects so many people, especially minority communities who have lesser access to bottled water or expensive purchased water versus just using tap water that's coming from their city. So this is this is absolutely unacceptable. And if fluoride is something which is supposed to be the only known benefit, the only reason why we're told we have it in our drinking water is for our teeth, then put it in your freaking toothpaste, but take it out of our and drinking water. Call it a water. day and give it a, into the capitalist society where we're supposed to be able to have the freedom of choice, then make it a choice. There's fluoride in this toothpaste, there's not fluoride in this toothpaste. If you want fluoride on your teeth and in your mouth, you can purchase this freely by your own decision. Mm. If a government is going to go so far as to medicate the water supply of their citizens, if means what they are putting in the water matters. If they're actually doing it out of the context of the health of their citizens, something like vitamin B12 linked to cancer would be a great thing to put into the water. And of course, that would have to be voted on and consented by the entirety of the population first. But just because the legislation comes from the 1950s when there was no questioning about this, doesn't mean that that legislation should be the basis of life in 2018 for our generation, for the new kids being born on this planet, because it is destroying the health of us. So, yes, and this is not. This is is literally not even mentioning the conscious and spiritual implications of intaking fluoride, which I, I'll make a whole separate video about. Um, and just just really quickly to let you guys know, basically in a in a nutshell, that is the calcification of what we call the pineal gland, which is directly related to the third eye. Our intuitive abilities or yogic powers and shaktis, which are innately in all human beings, um, and these abilities being stifled through the fluoridation of our bodies. So we'll dive into that in another video. And last but not <laughs> least, of course, interestingly enough, mm. on a very personal level, the concept of fluoridation of water on a mass scale in the country in which I live actually not just infringes my decision to be able to choose whether I'm medicated or not. It goes against my religious freedom as a Hindu following the instructions of my spiritual leader that I am not to ingest fluoride and I do not have a choice. I am required based on my own religious decision to purchase water I have to buy water, which is safe to drink, as per my religion. On top of this, I don't get to choose when it comes to taking a bath, and when it comes to uh, brushing my teeth, when it comes to, of course, when brushing my teeth, I, I actually put my the water that I paid for on non-fluoridated toothpaste and then brush my teeth, but I shouldn't be have to, having to go this far in the extremes in a country where I am told I have religious freedom and that I have sovereignty over my body when neither of those are true in this case yes yeah, so to recap whether or not you you personally want to ingest fluoride um, and I hope by the end of your own personal research you realize that it is very detrimental to your health and your safety um, but whether or not you decide that it should not be something which is decided for a nation mm. this is not Intaking a drug is against so many civil liberties, religious freedoms, and personal rights. So this is something which we should all take action for and against. Um, highly recommend for you guys, again, to do your research um, and contact the organizations and Fluoride Alert in your local cities and counties. There's so many petitions you can sign, and there's actually already been over 50 different um, cities that have banned fluoride in the U.S. So there actually is change starting to ripple out. It's becoming more and more known and mm -hmm. understood and it is becoming a little more mainstream and people are starting to question it finally so um thank you guys so much i hope this video was helpful and interesting for you 
Um, and if you feel as shocked by this as I know I was, <laughs> um, what you do is exactly what Nira just said. You need to make sure your water, especially the water you're drinking in drinking at such a high quantity does not have fluoride in it. You can purchase water very easily at a lot of different water, water shops where you can be, buy big jugs and fill them up. Um, and it's very cost effective actually. It's not too bad. I mean, of course we shouldn't have to be doing this, yeah. but um, you can do it even if you have very low income or no income, you can afford it. Make it your priority because it really is such a critical factor for your health. So. Thank you guys again, and thank you for Nirita for coming to my video. And it's been almost a year, I think, since we made a video together. So. And if you <laughs> feel inspired by this, make sure to share this with your loved ones because this is the proof that <laughs> me taking the responsibility over my body has an effect. Yes, our whole family actually does not drink fluoride anymore. Even our mom and dad, who don't even understand all of what we talk about or do, it somehow has gotten even into their consciousness that they do not drink any other water. So, um, yes, pass it along. Make sure we're all staying healthy and informed. Yeah? Awesome. All right, without further ado, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you soon. Nithinanda. Nithinanda.